we had, Jonathan had just won Premier Bard of Ernst York, right? He was the Premier Bard. And Duke Sigmund, who I don't, yeah, he, I guess he was a Duke then. Duke Sig Sigmund was involved with the board, and he went to the Principality of the Mist, right? And as he's sitting up there, he says to the prince and princess, where is your king, you know, your principality bar? And he, they said, well, he's way down there. And with straight face, he looked at them and said, well, in Onstiora, the premier bard always sits at the head table. Of course, he was the first duke of the land, and you know <laughs> that he didn't tell him that. So he he called chorus, called up the premier bard, and sat here next to him at the table, because the premier bard always sits at the table. And the bard's going, uh, I've never done this before. <laughs> but I mean, it's like okay, we went. We Jonathan was king of Aitenville. And we went up to the coronet of the Outlands, you know, co uh, competition. And uh, Lloyd Von Aker fought the buys. Buys didn't count. But Lloyd Von Aker managed to make it doing buys to the final round. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it was, and they had a buy in the final round, and he beat them. Right? <gasps> <laughs> but, so, with all due respect, because we're, we're part of, you know, here we have the Onstiorans, which are a bunch of strange people, you know, out there in the Netherlands, but at the same time, in Onstiora, we had people that were even stranger and were on the fringes. And <laughs> Jonathan and I were on the fringes, right? And it's like they didn't want to knight Jonathan. But they literally thought Jonathan couldn't fight his way out of a paper bag. And they said it repeatedly. <laughs> and they didn't think Lloyd could fight his way out of a paper bag either. And they said it repeatedly. So the guys looked at the Knights of Eight Bell when they were in the circle after Lloyd had beaten everybody, right? And said, you know, the people back home don't think we can fight at all. And so they spread this rumor from one end of Aitenveld to the other that you should see the guys back home. And, you know, which was one of the reasons... Hi, my nickname is Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. So when, uh, when, after dealing with Chorus, who just, who was like, really was like the bull in China shop, and then Jonathan, who who actually knew Kapora and could quote it, right? And he s stated that the crown in Kapora, the crown is the ultimate statement, right? Besides the bond, all right? So they, they, they had done things like forbid singing on the list field. And this proclamation was put out by Dennis of the Titans and um, uh, Ermin, Ermin saw you know, uh, Viscountess Hermes Hall, uh, Frederick's mother, you know. Anyway, she, she, they had just put it out in the newsletter because we sang by the uh, side of the Lisbeal and we were rowdy, yucky barbarians, right? And uh, so Jonathan just came in and took the Kapora and hit everybody in the head with it. Because <laughs> they had apparently not read the thing. I, I don't know. Of course, it was almost impossible to read at that time. But so the Anstior and Kings had really caused turmoil in Aitenveld proper. I mean, they were all running around singing that song, you know, what do we do with Jonathan, you know, kind of thing. Um, so they basically came up with this idea that they'd get rid of Onstior. So they said to our prince, who was a very nice gentleman, Simon of Amber, who would basically buy the Brooklyn Bridge if you offered it to him, right? Would you like to be your own kingdom? Now we were in a, I mean, we were in the middle of a knockdown battle between two groups in Onstiora. 
If this had been a normal situation, nobody in their right mind would ever offer us to be a kingdom until we got our act together, because our act was not together, period. So what happened was Simon said, and Tessa said, sure, that's wonderful. And we had to like get more, like 20 more people or something, and we had the membership. <laughs> At the time, Aitenfeld had to do the largest membership drive up until that time to get enough people so that they could become an independent kingdom. And uh, so, and one of their things were how many the next. Was, how, how many was that back then? What? Uh, 300. 300? I think it was 300. You remember? Um, it was 250 for a long, long time. Well, then it's probably 250. Um, because that was seen as a large number. What's the number now? Thing, thing, uh, I think the number now is 500. They, they sort of goofed it up because they were saying, we're having speciation far too much. <laughs> we, need, we need to slow down the fragmentation. Number of, the number of kingdoms being formed. Of course, I mean, at the, at the time, we but we became a kingdom. Say it's, say it's 250. It makes a nice number. 250 please sounds good. Please continue. Yeah. <laughs> but the time that they, by the time they got decided to get rid of us, right, they had just got Chorus. <laughs> you remember Chorus, right, the button pusher. Chorus, I, I, I'm a very good friend of Chorus, but we were political oppositions. And Chorus loved to push buttons. He didn't matter whether it was a good idea or a bad idea. He just liked to do it. As you know. <laughs> and so anyway, Trimeris had been let no Meridies. Which one? They'd gotten rid of that part of the whole kingdom. Meridies. I think it's Meridies, right? So he just said, Let's get rid of them. Zip. And now Onskiora is on the edge. And um, so they decided to get rid of us. And um, what happened was this stress of, what did you call it, fragmentation or? Speciation. New species. Oh, oh, into, oh, okay. As a process of evolution. Oh, all right. Well, they, the apparently. The analogy is rough. <laughs> I, I believe, from what I have gathered, there were lots of people that weren't happy with our breaking off because there were lots of groups that said, if Hans Dior can break off, why can't we, right? And so there was a, a lot of, you know, goings on where people were wringing their hands going, what have we done, right? Which led us to the first, uh, so we're king and queen. We have a kingdom that's split uh, between basically the old principality leadership and our new leadership. Now, the thing about our new leadership is we were the partiers, but we had decided that we would enter into politics because we didn't want to do politics. And we understand that you should do it efficiently so you can go back to doing fun stuff. And But you have to run things. Somebody's got to, the angels do not come from heaven and run things, right? But I call politicians dragons. And the problem with a lot of dragons is they lose their cool and roll over the cornfields. Uh, and they fight with each other, you know, and they cause you problems. And they're territorial. And so you have to take a rolled up newspaper and hit them in the nose regularly, right? So we were there and we were all split up. We were fragmented all sorts of ways, mainly between the North and the South. Um, but it, one of the things that happened, and why we were vulnerable, uh, but one of the things we did, which made us probably more vulnerable, is my husband wrote in the first official kingdom rapier rules. Period. Now, here we are with this sort of fragmented world. And it was very easy to encourage people to write 
petitions against us. And so there was a lot of talk, you know, and not all of it good. And to be honest, we were not completely blameless. I mean, I'll, but back to my husband. So my husband had written, wrote, wrote in these laws, and he got a telephone call from a source that I was never told, who informed him on the phone that the board of directors were planning to get together and vote off all live steel, period. Which would have killed the budding rapier society. And he, as king, was in a lot of trouble. But that trouble could go away if he just didn't tell them about the board meeting. Well, Jonathan being Jonathan, leaped up, put a hand in the air, and I'm not kidding about it, he said, this is not right. I ran from the kitchen going, what's not right? <laughs> Before I could even talk to him, he'd called the major leaders of the, Spash of the rapier movement. He called Tyvar, he called uh, 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 Dupre, he called Robin of Gilwell, he called all of these people and told them what was happening because it wasn't fair. And he's still glowing with his eyes going, you know, it's not fair, it's not right. They told me they got 30 people to go to the board meeting. They probably exaggerated, but you know, it, it might have been 30 people, I don't know. That may have been most of the rapier society at that time. And they stood up to the board and the board changed the amendment to be a kingdom by kingdom choice. Therefore, saving rapier fighting in Onstura. Now, as this settled down into dust, two weeks later, we were informed that we were having an inquiry about, about us. Now, they brought in all these weird charges. I mean, they, I will not go through the number of charges. Some of them were very strange. But none of them were against me. This whole inquiry was gained against Jonathan. And it is my belief that they felt that if they could prove that Jonathan had illegally done things illegally, then they would have pulled him as king and pulled all his actions out, right? So basically, Jonathan agreed with these people, he 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 apologized for his ma mistakes. You know, he told them that one, a couple of cases, the data we got, there was one man who had called us up and said, uh, you know, that asked us to do something, and if he had just been quiet, we would have been in a lot of trouble. But he got up, he walked up to the front, and he said, "I did this, right?" And they couldn't find anything. Because, one, he did not break the poor, you know. Even, I, <laughs> so, because Jonathan knew Kapora and because we didn't do anything wrong, but they felt they needed their pound of flesh. So basically they asked Jonathan to voluntarily uh, remove himself from fighting the list for two years. Now, yours truly, it's been sitting here, listening to them attack my husband, and by now, I, I, am a, I am a politician, right? And, and a lot of the things they attacked my husband on, I had done things to change it. I had done the right thing to change it. So I'm, I, I'm like a little hoppy bird. I'm going, I mean, you know, I, I, they ignored me so badly. I'm going, I did that. I, I did that, right? You know, and they're going, that's nice. You're, you know, your majesty, sit back down. And um, so when they came to me and they said, and you will voluntarily not give your favor for anyone for two years. And I, <laughs> they hadn't even talked to me. They talked to Jonathan, but they hadn't talked to me. And I told them no, I would not. <laughs> they hadn't proven anything against me. They hadn't even brought me up. Therefore, I didn't think I should be sanctioned in any ways they put before. And Catherine Kurtz, 
uh, who was leading this, Bevan and Frazier, uh, they looked at me and they says, well, in that case, you will be forbidden to carry your, anyone to carry your favor for two years. And um, because one letter said I was dishonorable, what they really meant was they didn't want me having the favor because they were afraid I would rat dat dat on the people who caused this problem, you know. And I would like to think that maybe I would be good enough to turn the other cheek. But on the other hand, I might not have been. But it, so, I was denied the right to be fought for for two years, you know. But on the other hand, I wouldn't have given my favor to anyone else but Jonathan. So it was a mute point. <laughs> so, now, we've had this, this is the reason why Ansteora does not necessarily like the BOD.